uh, this is schemat, uh, this presentation. I'm hoping to complete the calculation of a tax liability for natural persons. I've already calculated other important aspects that are required in the determination of a tax liability of a natural person and previous parts. Specifically in parts one to six, I dealt with other important calculations pertaining to the calculation of a tax liability for natural persons. In this part specifically, I'd like to calculate the total tax liability and I'd like to refer to this presentation as part seven. In part seven, I'm going to calculate the total normal tax liability. The total normal tax liability of the taxpayer is made of tax arising from other items and tax arising from lump sums. Remember, for lack of a better word, I'm referring to other items as, as so that to draw a clear distinction between uh, items such as salaries, uh, interest received, dividends received, and other income items from um, income arising from retirement lump sums or severance uh, benefit. As I've mentioned, for us to determine the total normal tax liability of a taxpayer, we're going to take those two items and we're going to add them together. In this presentation, I'm going to solely focus on tax on, on lump sums as I've already calculated uh, the tax on other items in part six. Of course, in determining the tax liability um, arising from lump sums, we're going to refer to the table, but in this case, we're going to use the table specifically addressing the tax consequences arising from lump sums. Without wasting your time, I'd like us to go back to our question paper. There you go, let me zoom it a little. There you go, that's the question paper. Remember, we want to address the tax on lump sums. I'm quickly going to take you to the table that we're going to employ to determine such tax expense. That's the table that we use to determine tax on other items. Not We're not going to use it at this stage. We're going to use uh, the tax on retirement lump sums. The logic or the thought process uh, behind the application of uh, tables, it's exactly the same. However, I'm going to show you how it works just in case you've forgotten the principles relating to the other table that we used. Let's quickly go to our calculations. At this stage, that's how it looks like. I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but that's how it looks like. We, at that point, because we want to determine the tax expense attributable to lump sums. Remember, we already did other important aspects, that is the tax as per table for natural persons, and we took into account various rebates. At this point in time, we here, I just quickly want to highlight, I just want to magnify, allow me to magnify that, I'm quickly going to magnify that, let's increase the font, it's too much, should we go 48, okay, there you go. I'm just going to open it a little. Apologies. Okay, there you go. So essentially what we want to do, we want to continue the calculation, but we want to calculate the tax attributable to the lump sums. I'm going to highlight them in a different color so that you can actually follow what we're doing. I'm going to highlight all those are referred to as um, lump sums, uh, gratuity and accumulated uh, severance benefit. And then the pension lump sum, it's a retirement lump sum. We're going to use the same table to tax them. At the moment, our taxable income, it's sitting at um, 698.30. So I'm going, to, I'm going to say that I'm dealing with tax on lump sums. I'm dealing with tax on, on lump sums. That's what I'm dealing with. On lump sums. There you go. So I'm going to take uh, taxable income Remember we make reference to the taxable income in calculating the tax. I'm going to take the taxable income. There you go. I'm going to say equals to that amount 
I quickly want to take you to the question paper. Uh, quickly, let's go to the question paper. And, and in the question paper, we're given, we're given contributions to the pension fund disallowed in, in the previous year. I'm of the view that these contributions should actually be taken into account in determining the contributions in terms of Section 11F. But for the purpose of uh, studies of have seen at what, what we do is with these contributions, we actually deduct them from uh, the retirement lump sums. In actual fact, um, that's exactly uh, how we would do this. We would actually take uh, the contributions to pension fund disallowed in the previous year, deduct them from lump sums. But remember, in terms of Section 11F, uh, anything that was relating to retirement lump sums that was um, disallowed in the previous year because it exceeded the limitation in terms of Section 11F. In this current year, it would be taken into account in determining uh, the amount to be deductible in terms of retirement funds uh, in regards to Section 11F. But as I've mentioned, for the purpose of our studies, we're going to take the 17,500, we're going to deduct it from lump sums. It's not an incorrect practice. Yes, it's, it's a recognized practice. Um, however, there could be different tax treatments, but I'm going to take it, I'm going to deduct it from, from, from lump sums. So I'm going to say uh, disallowed. Disallowed. Pension contributions. I just want to cut it short. There you go. It, it should read uh, disallowed pension contributions. We're going to deduct the disallowed pension contributions. How much? It came to 17,500. We are given in the question paper. I'm going to deduct it there. There you go. So essentially, this is the only expense that you will deduct against your taxable income attributable to lump sums. Let's get the amount once we've deducted. I'm just going to say some. There you go. So our taxable income that will be subject to tax uh, using the, uh, the, tax, the retirement lump sums table is 680500. So we're going to go to the table. Remember, uh, we're going to calculate the tax expense in that column because we wanted to join this column so that we can determine what we call the, total, the normal tax uh, liability for tip toe. Let's quickly go to tables. I'm going to go to tables. Let's see what happens. There you go. Let's go to the table. Remember the logic behind the application of the table is that you're going to use the taxable income. That's the final taxable income. And then you're going to identify the applicable bracket in reference to the taxable income. The first tax bracket, the first tax brackets will only uh, be applicable if your taxable income is between zero and 500,000. Therefore, we're going to apply that tax bracket because our amount is, no, we're not, we're not going to apply that tax bracket. We're going to apply that tax bracket because there's tax brackets <coughs> will cater for taxable incomes that are between 680 and 945. Our amount is 680, definitely we're going to apply the tax rates as per that bracket. You can see that column say, says it, it relates to tax rates. So we're going to take in calculating uh, tax uh, expense relating to our taxable income. We're going to take that amount, 56,700. I'm going to take it there. I'm going to say equals to 56,700. We took it there. That's our tax. And then we're going to say plus. You can follow from the table. I'm doing exactly what they're saying. And you're going to take the 27%. I'm going to multiply because we're going to multiply at the end. I'm going to multiply. Then I'm going to establish a bracket. And then uh, they say um, uh, we want to tax 680, but the 630, the tax on 680, it's uh, 56,700. So we've already determined the tax on the 680. And it says to an extent that uh, our taxable income of 680 exceeds 630, the difference between the 680 and 630 will be taxable at 27%. So let me communicate that mathematically. We're going to say 6, 6, 
8500 that's essentially our tax on income we're going to deduct the 630 because we've already determined the tax on the 630 630 that's the 630 that we're going to that's the 630 that we're going to minus from our tax on income and then the on the difference on the rising difference we're going to apply the 27 percent let's quickly go there i'm gonna close a bracket enter okay let me open it there you go that's essentially our tax on uh, lump sums that's our tax on, on lump sums um for us to determine our normal tax liability normal tax liability There you go, our normal tax liability. I'm just going to say sum, and I want sum of all those until, until there. So that's essentially, that will give us, that's essentially the tax liability that is due to SARS, uh, that TIPTO uh, has to, to pay to SARS. I just want to get that. There you go. So the total normal tax liability came to 77,510. Thank you. This was our last presentation. Um, I hope you'll follow me in other presentations. Thank you.